I'm going to walk through a few different screens here. I want to try and give a beginning to end kind of soup to nuts experience here. Um, but there are some of these actions that take a little bit of time with eventual consistency within Teams itself. So I'm going to start at the very beginning of this flow that Chris described here. So I'm in the 8x8 Virtual Office Configuration Manager under Identity Management. I have my sync here set to be Microsoft Azure AD. And so this is where the SKIM configuration is done. And we're going to pull the users over from Microsoft Azure AD and actually have those users appear into the API ecosystem. So this is the first part of that synchronization that Chris mentioned. Under the licenses, I have an entitlement for the Voice for Teams license. So still in the early access stage here, but we can see I have a SKU in my list of licenses. I'm currently consuming 21 out of the 400 I have. So we can see here that I have the entitlement available to give to users. And then if I go into an individual user here, and I'll pick on my Alvin user here, when the user loads and I go down to the area to look at the licenses that this person has, we can see here now that I have an option to essentially enable this add-on SKU. So to Chris's point, some of the people, right, the Teams users will have this in the entitlement, will click the toggle to give them the license. If there's lobby phones, retail phones, that position versus persona, those users or those extensions don't need to have the integration and they don't need to purchase the add-on for those folks. So from an administrator, perspective, we can see the ability to synchronize over from O365, get the users in. We have the license entitlement, and then very clean and easy to be able to assign that to the users that would require it. So from the configuration manager perspective, those are the key areas um, that we're looking at and how you would deliver and implement this. The next piece I'm jumping to here, this is the um, Voice for Teams portal. So this is the administrative portal used to kind of configure the orchestration layer that actually brings all of this together. And there's two key pieces to this. There's the PBX configuration, which is really where the API 8 piece synchronizes from. And there are some options here to override specific settings or values within what will get pushed into Microsoft here. And we're synchronizing the users automatically from 8 by 8 And then similarly here, you can go in and configure your O365 account and a synchronization there where it's going to pull the users from both sides. Having done this and done our synchronization, the screen ends up looking like the screen I'm loading here. So we can see for the vast majority of these users, we have the Teams portion of the user and the 8x8 portion. We've matched these folks together. We've pulled the phone number and the other particulars from 8x8 into the orchestration layer. And we can also see here for this user, is the orchestration layer active? Is the user activated and registered? And we can also see here a recent call log. So I can actually go in and see a list of all the recent calls that have come and gone via the orchestration layer and the integration. So we have really good visibility here into what the status of the users are, what's mapped, is it functioning, and what's occurred recently. And then at the top here, I have a user that doesn't have a Teams license. So Larry Linux is not a Microsoft person. Here it's saying they're unlicensed. And if I click in, it's showing me that this person doesn't have a matching Teams user. And at the moment, I don't have any match teams here. So in this case, if this wasn't somebody that I intended to have here, first of all, I purposely put them in here by clicking the entitlement for teams when I probably wouldn't have, but I could go and remove them from here as well, and they wouldn't get synchronized again. Last piece here, we have an ability to go and add added administrators. So if you want to add somebody and have them be able to just have visibility into this portal or be a service contributor, meaning able to come in and make changes and to take actions, or an account owner. So there's multiple different roles where we can invite people in to become part of the administrators for this particular portion of the Voice for Teams offering. So from an administrative perspective, initial setup, we're kind of creating the services, setting how we want those settings to look, synchronizing the users together, and then redoing this if there's more users added. We would simply click the synchronize button. It will ask us for a validation of our O365 login. So we do this so that we don't store any administrative credentials for your O365 environment. So every time it will ask you to kind of do this, it then gets an OAuth token and performs the actions on your behalf. Last thing that was mentioned here was just on the sync, and I won't go into it in detail, but just to understand this trail here showing us the PowerShell actions, the Microsoft Graph, all of the various actions that this integration and this orchestration layer are performing on your behalf 
this is all complex stuff that you would need to do in the back end of Microsoft Teams if you were trying to go down and they're going to roll your own direct routing type of capability. So the orchestration layer is handling all of this for you and it's handling it on a global basis. So it's building this infrastructure out all around the world to service your users. So from an administrative perspective, these are the views in, these are the capabilities. I think it's very simple and easy. The feedback we've been getting from everyone we've shown this to is that it takes a lot of the burden away and delivers value very quickly and easily. Jumping to the user experience, and I'll kind of reset the scene here for everybody. So on the right-hand side of my screen here, this is my Microsoft Teams Windows app. I happen to be a Windows person, but the Teams app could be Windows, Mac, Linux. You could use it in a browser. And on the left-hand side, this is my mobile device. Again, I happen to be an Android person, but iOS is fully supported. And of course, if you had a Microsoft physical phone, a plastic phone, that also works. From our perspective, Teams just looks like a single thing. And whether you're using one or all of these interfaces Teams provides, it's irrelevant from our perspective. We're not restricting you in any way. The key aspects here from a user perspective, if I start looking at my call history here, let me make this a little larger, so I can see some PSCN calls that have come and gone here. Brian is another Teams user, and I've been calling back and forth with him. And 2001, this might be an analog floor, a phone out in a warehouse or in a production facility or in retail. We have three different communities here, the external PSTN community, internal Teams users, and internal non-Teams. And all of these things are accessible to me right here in this single interface. I can call back to any one of these folks by just clicking. And anywhere in Teams that there's an ability to dial somebody or a party, I can do that natively within the app. There's no plugin, there's no extension, there's no download. The user experience is pure and what's expected from a Teams user. So to show what the experience looks like for an incoming call, I'm gonna place a call in here. We're gonna see a couple of things happen. So in the mobile app, we see the answer dialog appear here and the Teams experience is that then in the bottom right corner, this toast pop-up comes and we can click to accept the call. Again, key thing here, there's no plugin, there's nothing that doesn't look and feel like native Teams. If I want to come in here and consult and transfer, it's all na native natural Teams. There's nothing new to learn. The change management is going to be seamless if you've been using Teams for internal communication and collaboration. All of it just works the way you would expect. I can go back and resume my call. And if I go and click hang up, the phone call ends. So we can see here really that the user experience in Teams is very simple. There's nothing new to learn. And that's exactly what folks are asking for from a really deep, rich integration. So Alan mentioned that you know, we are seeing this integration as different from what other folks are doing and that we aren't in a position where this is a dumb pipe. And I think one of the best ways to kind of show that is if I take a look here at my Salesforce integration, this is an existence and working alongside Teams. So I have my standard Salesforce integration. I signed in here using my O365 credentials into 8x8. And as calls come in here, if I make a call in to this user, so if I make a call, we're going to see the call come in. We're going to see screen popping occurring in Salesforce. The call is presented there. It's also being presented in Teams. I can answer the call in Teams. The Salesforce and 8x8 panel are fully aware that that's occurred. I can take basic call actions now from right within Salesforce. I can, for example, record the call if that was a permission I had. So now I'm recording the call. I'm continuing that conversation, working along within Salesforce. And if I end the call from within the 8x8 panel, panel in Salesforce, we see Teams understands that occurs. The activity is created in Teams or in Salesforce, just like we'd expect, and up to and including the call recording link. To me, this is a really important proof point. So if you just plug a SIP trunk into the back of Teams, all you would get is dial tone. You wouldn't have had a screen pop in Salesforce. You wouldn't have had an activity auto-created. You wouldn't have been able to record that call. These are all very common things that are applicable to a lot of users now, and quite honestly, they're an expectation as people move to a UC platform from a PBX. And these are all things that are difficult to deliver with Teams without using an integration like Voice for Teams from 8x8. 
So last user scenario I just wanted to mention here is contact center. So again, because we're really treating teams just like another endpoint, it can work along with our contact center solution in exactly the same way that any of our other endpoints can. So again, here, bringing over the agent experience. And so let me launch an incoming call for our contact center. So incoming call coming in. So here we can see that I have a call that's in queue in my virtual contact center. And as my agent, if they come available here, we'll see as the normal experience, right? We have the call being offered in virtual contact center and Teams is offering me the call and I can answer the call in Teams. So again, just like it would be if I was leveraging virtual office desktop or any of the other 8x8 endpoints, Teams can act as my endpoint for these calls. And of course, because we're using voice for Teams, that's obviously an on-net interaction between virtual contact center and voice for Teams. And I could also use this with the virtual contact center persistent connection, where it would simply call me once at the beginning of my session. And then essentially I would be all focused on Teams and then focus all my activity over into the agent communication panel within virtual contact center. 